Okay, in this video we're going to look at a simple proposition based on the definition of the order of an element modulo n. So let's recall the definition. The order of a mod n is the least natural number m such that a to the m is congruent to 1 mod n. And so, and in that case we would write ord n a equals m. <clears throat> or sometimes if we're only working one mod modulo, one mo modulus, we would leave off the n. Okay, good. So the proposition that we want to prove is that if a to the k is congruent to 1 mod n, then the order of a mod n is uh, divides k, and vice versa. If we have that division property, then a to the k is congruent to 1 mod n. Okay, so let's look at the proof. So let's do uh, the forward direction first. So let's, in other words, suppose that a to the k is congruent to 1 modulo n, and then uh, use the division algorithm with k and the order of a. And so that allows us to write k equals the order of a times a quotient plus a remainder. And then that remainder is between 0 and the order of a. Good. And so the next thing that we want to do is use the following. So now we can take a to the k, which we know that that is congruent to 1 mod n by our assumption, and we can rewrite a to the k using this decomposition in the division algorithm. So that means we can write a to the order mod n of a times q plus r. And now we can use exponent rules to write this as follows. This is a to the order modulo n of a, all of that to the q power times a to the r power, which is congruent to 1, uh, which is congruent to a to the r mod n. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We know that this bit is congruent to 1 mod n because we've raised a to the order and so that tells us that a to the r is congruent to 1 mod n but look r is less than the order and remember that r is supposed to sorry the order is supposed to be the least positive number that has this property so since r is less than that order it can't be any of those positive numbers which tells you that r has to be equal to 0 but if you've done the division algorithm and you've gotten the remainder of 0, then that tells you that um, the order of A, in fact, does divide K. So um, that finishes this direction of the proof. So I'll erase the board and then we'll pick up with the next direction of the proof. Okay, so now we're ready to pick up with the next direction of this proof. So in other words, we want to suppose that k, sorry, that the order of a modulo n, in fact, divides k. Which, that tells us that we can write k equals the order of a modulo n times some other number. So let's say that's times b with b some natural number. Okay, great. And so now let's calculate a to the k. So we have a to the k is the same thing as a to the order of a times b, which is a to the order of a to the b power. But again, that is equal to 1 to the b, which is congruent to 1 mod n.
good. And we've used the fact that a to the order of a must be one. That's how we define the order of a. Okay, good. So we finished the proof of this proposition. So I want to erase uh, the proof and then look at a corollary real, qu real quick before the end of the video. Okay, so here's a very important corollary to that this uh, uh, proposition, which is as follows. Um, the order uh, modulo n of a divides phi of n, where that's Euler's totient function. In other words, the number of positive integers smaller than n that are relatively prime to n. So let's like sketch a proof of this real quick. So by Euler's theorem, or sometimes called Euler's generalization of Fermat's little theorem, we know a to the phi of n is congruent to 1 mod n. But now applying the proposition, and that will tell us that the order modulo n of a in fact divides phi of n. So um, in the next couple videos, we're going to use this very important corollary a bunch of times in order to find um, possible orders of elements and other such things. Okay, good. So this is the end of the video.